um, how light do you train during a deload? Uh, so for those that don't know, a deload typically is a period of time in training where you're um, allowing yourself to kind of recover beyond the fatigue that you threw yourself from previous training. So a very common cycle or pattern is, you know, three to four or five weeks hard, one week kind of off and then rinse and repeat trying to lift more weight or more volume. Um, I typically do not program or coach uh, lighter weeks uh, during my deloads. It depends, obviously, if it's kind of an off season, if it's a travel, if it's a vacation, if it's a lifestyle thing that we're kind of working around. Uh, you know, you're in an off season powerlifter and now you're in Hawaii and you have to train lighter because you're in a hotel gym or you're a time crunch or you're, you know, you're work in a certain industry and you have three weeks that you have to work really hard and you just can't get to the gym for three hours to power lift or whatever, we might go lighter. Um, but typically whether it be leading up to a meet or even an off season, I tend to take away volume and keep intensity, how heavy the weight is a little bit higher. Um, I find if you take, because it's a typical thing like, Oh, lift a three by three at 50% for a D load or something. Um, that probably started in some like cookie cutter program. What I find will happen then uh, is when you do get back into the gym, the weights just feel so heavy. Um, whereas you can still hit like doubles, triples, singles, kind of heavy, take away the sets, less volume during a deload. Uh, so you can recover a little bit better, get a little more sleep. Maybe we take away some of the accessories instead of doing three or four sets of chest press or shoulder press. We'll just do one or two, uh, but still keep it heavy. As soon as you get back to heavy training the week after, or two weeks after, uh, weights just feel a little bit better. They still feel light. You still feel recovered. Um, and same thing leading into a meet. It used to be very normal. And again, it's different when you're lifting in powerlifting gear, which then translated to raw lifting because people didn't realize the differences because raw powerlifting wasn't really a thing. Mm. Um, that you take 7, 10, 15 days off the gym or out of gear. And so then when you're lifting raw, if you're a 1,000-pound squatter, you may only squat four or 500 pounds raw, which is then 50%. Right. Um, but if you're squatting 600 pounds raw and that's your opener in a meet and you take 10 days off and all you do is squat 315, 15 days later, you got to warm up to about 550, 575 <coughs> before taking 600 on the platform. And although adrenaline's going, your groove's going to be off and it's not going to feel nice. Rather than why not take 500 to 550, you know, if you're in shape and depending on the scope of your program, three days out, five days out uh, for singles, which aren't very fatiguing. And now you'll feel real strong and still fresh if the volume's gone uh, leading into the meet or just get in better shape overall. If you can handle six sets of squats, this is hypothetical, six sets of squats three times a week at varying loads, then going into a meet, you could still do two, three, four sets of squats two or three times a week and it won't affect you at all, right? It's all of what you're yeah. adapted to and what your general fitness is. But if you squat once a week and you're only doing three hard sets once a week in squats, that's probably all you're going to be able to recover from. If you add another day, you're going to be sore and tired. I think it's um, insane how quickly people get detrained. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> and I and I don't know. I mean, the, I it certainly came up in an era where you were taking at least a week off. Yeah. But in gear, but... I, I have observed way too many people who are raw lifters who get anxious if they cannot train in that final week. And I think that if if it's going to make you more anxious that you haven't trained in that week, you actually need to figure out something to do. Yeah. You need to, you, need to, you know, it used to be, you know, recovery work, sled drags, all that, you know, that kind of that sort of West Side mentality. But I don't think that that's enough for a lot of people. And yeah. I think that, you know don't get crazy don't kill yourself for the week for the meat by um by overtraining sure like like you were doing working up to a peak but you know choose like something mike was saying there where you're 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 hitting some heavier weights you're getting some intensity you just don't have the volume that you have to recover from um it seems like a much better plan for a lot of people and a lot of a lot of raw lifters are just like maniacs anyway yeah they're maniacs in a different way that they than the geared people were it's it's just logical to me too and obviously there is science to back it up but i, I can't <coughs> footnote studies my brain's a little bit more full of our branding and gym design but if you just look at uh, across the spectrum in other sports 
And obviously it's different because we're talking about more external load, which may be more fatigue on the, the CNS and, and, and mentally and physical fatigue. Um, but if you start to look at golf, look at a basketball player, look at a tennis player, even a runner, Steph Curry isn't taking seven days off from shooting a basketball before the playoff game. No. You're not taking seven days off from swinging a baseball bat or swinging a golf club. And I understand that the fatigue is less from swinging 100 baseball, swinging, uh, hitting 100 balls in a batting cage is different than doing 100 reps in the gym, 100%. But even if you scale it, you do 100, uh, let's make it up and say 100 pitches is equal to five sets in the gym of general fatigue or, or specific fatigue. If we take, people would take all five sets away, but no way are you not pitching if you're about to go pitch in the World Series, like five <laughs> days out. Like, you're, you got to warm up. You have to practice your skill. So if you just stop squatting 15 days out, squatting is a skill just as much as throwing is a skill. Mm -hmm. um, so you take that out, and now you're probably going to feel quite rusty going into it rather than, again, greasing the groove with something heavier. Another thing people think about, like, well, I'll just go real light. Well, like, you don't, if you're a 600-pound squatter, squatting 225, it doesn't Do get you anything. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same. It's right. not doing anything on your muscles, but it's even even the skill of it is so different. You got to get into that 80-90% and then just take away the volume. So long story short, with deloads, I typically um, will do maybe even 50% the volume, uh, but keep the weight fairly high uh, for when we're uh, trying to deload, depending on the cycle. I know that's long term, but a lot of it does depend. And that's why podcast is cool, because people ask me this shit in fucking Instagram or DM or... And I can't really explain, but it, it fully depends on the individual. 